Let's bring in uh, Newt Gingrich, former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, author of Trump's America. He joins us right now. Mr. Speaker, good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so uh, when last we left, uh, the president was on the verge <laughs> of reopening the government. Now he's given three weeks for this conference committee of 17 lawmakers, uh, about half Republicans, half Democrats, to come up with a big deal. Will you just explain, as Speaker of the House, how this works? Because you've got senators, you've got, uh, you got uh, congressmen, you've got Republicans, you've got Democrats, you have Democrats in charge, but how do they get to yes? Well, you've got, you have to go around and gather votes. Uh, you start with an idea. You find out how many people will vote yes. You figure out how many are missing. You walk around again and say, okay, what do I need to do to get your vote? And you gradually accumulate enough votes. And you remember always that in the end, the president has to sign it. So it's a circular process. I, I remember one point when we were negotiating with Clinton that uh, Dick Army and I were up all night uh, negotiating with Leon Panetta, who was chief of staff at the time. And literally, we were, we were in a room uh, for hour after hour after hour, and we finally came down to one last item. And the question was, were we exhausted enough to just say, yeah, let's just get it done? Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge you have here is, uh, if Pelosi is willing to guarantee a vote on the House floor, I think they can write something that will pass the House. Uh, but if she insists it be something she can support, I doubt if they can get anything done because she's so frightened of her left wing that, that she can't concede anything the president wants. But as speaker, she could schedule it and allow half the Democrats plus the Republicans to pass it. When you say you go person to person, tally the votes... When you were a speaker, wasn't there it, Democrats and Republicans were willing to listen to each other. They were willing to work together much more so than they are now. You have Joe sure. Manchin, who was the only one to vote for this Republican Senate proposal, and he's saying there's a lack of trust, a lack of belief. So he wants an engineer, a nonpartisan, non-biased outside observer to come in and figure out how to solve the problem <laughs> to avoid another shutdown. I mean, that's where we are. Look, I, I you know, I, I think these are adults. I, th I think you can get them in a room. Again, I think there are very big power differences and ideological differences. But I noticed the other day that I think some 30 Democrats said they would vote to fund the wall in order to keep the government open. Well, those 30 Democrats allied with Kevin McCarthy, the Republican leader, would be a majority in the House. The question is, can they force mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi or get Nancy Pelosi to agree? All she's got to say is she's going to bring up her idea and she's going to allow a substitute by McCarthy. The Democrats who are just who want to keep the government open will vote with McCarthy, uh, and you'll see it passed. Right. And the question is, will the president sign it? Because the president says, "I only accept 5.7 billion." So I think the would you say the best tactic for the president through this process would be to lay low, let these guys hash it out behind the scenes, yeah. and let them know what he Look, will do, rather than discourage what's going on behind closed doors or encourage. I, I think the more the president can focus on everything else, he's got more than enough on his plate that he can go work on uh, everything from the 5G competition with China uh, to the Venezuela. opportunities, the things happening in Venezuela. I mean, I think he ought to say this ought to get taken care of. Frankly, Jared Kushner did a very good job with criminal justice reform, put together a bipartisan majority. I would trust Jared to be in the room as part of this process. And Mick Mulvaney, who served in the Congress, uh, those two guys sitting in a room, being practical, going back to the president and saying, look, we can get you, you know, okay, let, let, it's not 5.7 or nothing. Uh, right. you, you, well, it's 5.6, he's not going to sign it. Now you start this called a negotiation. Uh, and it's also a question of what they got. I very much want to see them take care of the dreamers as a part of this package. And I know talking to Lindsey Graham and others, there's real interest in the Senate on a bipartisan basis to get a deal that takes care of the dreamers, takes care of the southern border, right, right. meets the president's needs and gets signed. But do you know in the Wall Street Journal today, he said that's a separate issue, the president. Who said that's a separate issue? The president. Well, he may have said, he, but here's the question. Is he going to veto a bill that includes it? 
I don't think so. Well, if Ann Coulter not writes, he might not, are you worried? He's worried very much about the extreme conservatives, the Ann Coulters of the world. If he's afraid of losing what he considers his base, should he be less concerned? Well, he should. He should not pay any attention to Ann Coulter. Ann Coulter has never run for office. She doesn't know anything about how you put a majority together. Right. Uh, she's off here in some fantasy land where she gets to be she gets to be noisy, uh, which helps her sell books. The fact is, the president's base is with the president, and the president's base. If he goes to him and says, "I got this done for the wall, I got this done to protect America, I'm doing these good things you believe in." Um, the base is going to say, fine, 80 percent of the country believes that you ought to find legal ways for people who came here as children to become legal in a way that's not necessarily a path to citizenship, yeah. but certainly a path to, to a job. Sometimes you got to say to your base, hey, if you're really my base, you got to stick with me. Because, it, because you got to compromise in our system. We, we, did, anyone take, did anyone take 11th grade social studies? I always tell my conservative, most conservative friends, if you are a constitutional conservative, you by definition have to believe in compromise. The founding fathers wrote a machine designed to avoid dictatorship mm -hmm. by making it so inefficient that you can barely get it to work. And it's designed to say the Senate has power, the House has power, the Supreme Court has power, the president has power. Now, in that box, we preserve freedom, but we've got to be able to act. And I think <clears throat> we've had enough of this dance. Uh, my personal prediction is we're not going to close the government again. Uh, in a worst case, the president, I think, will sign an emergency decree. And I agree with Senator Roy Blunt, who said it's a bad precedent, because who knows what the next liberal will do. But I think if the president is, is stiffed by Nancy Pelosi and she refuses to protect America, he has a commander-in-chief obligation to protect Americans and could be forced into it. I hope that won't happen. And as if the adults in the Senate and the adults in the House will sit in a room and work it out, there is no reason. I mean, I did this when Clinton and I were fighting all the time. Right. But we managed to get four consecutive balanced budgets because we'd listen to each other, we'd negotiate, we'd sometimes yell at each other. And we had some very tough conversations. Mm -hmm. But we always put America first and tried to figure out how to get to an American solution. Well, let's see if they do something big, as you have suggested. Speaking of big, uh, already the roster of potential Democrats who would like to be president uh, gotten a little bigger. Yesterday, uh, Kamala Harris uh, unveiled her campaign in front of the courthouse where she is to be a prosecutor. Uh, and Hillary Clinton now is telling apparently a couple of uh, her friends that she hasn't ruled out running a third time. What do you make of uh, these developments, Newt? Well, look, I, I, Kamala Harris is one of the people I thought is, is a real front runner, but I think uh, she has to be very careful about Willie Brown, the former Speaker of the House, uh, who is apparently not necessarily trying to help her campaign right now by describing her early career. Uh, so I think she may end up with some interesting things to answer. I frankly love the idea that we're about to have a Starbucks independent candidate for president. Mm -hmm. uh, from, from President Trump's standpoint, the more independent candidates, the better. Uh, and frankly, if you watch what's going to happen to the Democrats, they're all going to run to the left. Yep. I mean, they're, they're going to be so far out over here on the left by the time we get around to the election uh, that it's going to be cloud cuckoo land. Free and health care, free school, free preschool. Yeah, no, yeah. Open borders, free medical care for everybody, every illegal immigrant in the world. Please come to let the taxpayers in America take care of you. And let's have a tax rate so high we'd kill all jobs for the next 20 years. And wipe I mean, out wealth. This stuff is fairly nutty. If and Howard they love Schultz, it, and it goes over very well for them. If Howard Schultz does get in, he, he's given a lot of money to the Democrats in the past, but he says he's a centrist and he's an independent. What would that mean for the Democratic Party or even for, for President Trump? I think President Trump should uh, tweet about him at least once a week, encourage him, taunt him, do whatever it takes. The more independent candidates there are, they're not going to split the Trump vote. I mean, if you're for Donald Trump, it's because you want real change. You want a real commitment to America as a country. You want somebody who's going to fight to protect America. And you're not going to be attracted to some guy from Seattle who, you know, who managed to sell a lot of coffee and get to be a billionaire. You're going to say, terrific, okay. I hope the Democrats split. And I hope rational Democrats vote for him as an independent, and the nutcakes can vote for the Democratic nominee, and Trump gets reelected. All right. He's New, actually from Brooklyn. But. Newt Gingrich, thanks a latte for waiting in, in Brooklyn, on Howard's shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> All right.